Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. I don't know if I'm live or not, so let me check one second. Um, if you can, please um, pause. Okay, I think so. So basically, it's um, let me check here. So this uh, life is going to be a breakdown for the um, ingredient allantoin. Um, like safety, the concentration used usually, um, what is the potential benefits of the allantoin? Is it going to be good for any type of skin or no? Oh, perfect. Hey, hello. Um, the, we will talk about it like in details. So I prepared a little bit of a bullet point so I can cover everything about uh, allantoin. So we will go through them a little bit. Hey, Christina, how are you? Uh, so, yeah, uh, I will start. So this will be recorded. And uh, if you if you miss it live, you can, like I said, it will be recorded on my channel and you can add your comments, etc. And I will answer them later. So if you have a question currently, uh, hi, Vidur, how are you? So if you have a question right now, please put them in the chat and I will answer them in live. And if you have a question later, put them in the comment and again, I will answer them definitely. So let's start. Uh, so I won't take a lot of your time. So what is allantoin? Allantoin is an organic compound, which means it's made from carbon atoms, etc. And it is, um, it can be found in nature. So basically it's the main, one of the main compounds in aloe vera. That's why aloe vera is so th soothing and help with irritation and redness. So yes, it can be found in aloe vera and uh, calendula uh, officinalis, the uh, Latin name for a plant, but I don't know the actual uh, common name. And um, it has like a various benefit that is supported by mostly in vitro study, which means cells on a dish, but there are, uh, as an ingredient, it is used a lot um, in cosmetics and non-cosmetics and a benefit has been seen. So it is going to be uh, not the best when it comes to data, but it is something that is proven by um, a lot of case studies, I would say. So basically uh, it has a wound healing. So one study that I went through, all the resources will be in the description. So if you want to read. Uh, one study that uh, done on animals, uh, they did an artificial incision and they did uh, a hydrogel patch uh, infused with allantoin. So what they did is that they noticed that the uh, the mouse that was treated with hydrogel infused with allantoin had a 73% um, better healing. So uh, uh, less scarring, less redness, um, less um, unnatural skin sc structure, and also the complete closure of the uh, incision or the cut uh, or the wound was done uh, by day 15 compared to the control which takes uh, a little bit longer so wound healing is one of the properties that you can use allantoin so which means if you have an acne a scar that is giving you a, a little bit of trouble to uh, deal with allantoin can be something really good with that the second benefit would be is anti-inflammatory. So allantoin was found to be able to modulate, I'm talking about ingredient, not a product, because as an ingredient, you can do this claim, but as a product, you have to do the actual study on the product, the final formula to do to have those claims. But allantoin as an ingredient can modulate how your immunity cell uh, function when there is a physical trauma to your skin. And in a way it calms the the uh, immunity cells so they don't release a lot of what we call cytokines or uh, uh, pro-inflammatory signals to other cells to come and do the business of immunity um, the immunity system in the um, wound area so what this the uh, allantoin does is just calm down and not completely block but calm down the uh, level of this uh, release of cytokines that are considered pro-inflammatory and another point is that it has a, a little bit of a chirolytic ability it's very mild chirolytic it helps with breaking down the bonds between the keratin cells on the uh, stratum conium of your cell uh, of your skin so basically it has a very very mild chirolytic effect on your skin so uh, as a raw material uh, allantoin is uh, considered a white powder uh, very well um, um, 
a white powder very well uh, dissolved in water uh, and it can be dissolved uh, with alcohol as well and uh, but it is very badly dissolved with uh, polar solvent so that is basically uh, yes basically um, it is very I would consider one of the lightest uh, exfoliants out there it has very mild ability to do this so if you are using a gentle exfoliator you would can have a very decent result with it so uh, like i said it's a white odorless and tasteless um, kind of raw material so it can be incorporated a lot of aqueous formula which means that is water-based formula which is a good thing that means it's very light and uh, it won't be greasy and it doesn't need oils to be dissolved and um, when it comes to stability, you don't have to be scared about the stability of your allantoin in your formula because it's quite stable. One study did is that they dissolved 0.13% uh, uh, allantoin in water. And after 620 days, only 6.3% were degraded. So it's quite stable and you can use it until the product is finished. And hopefully you will have the same amount of a product uh, that you started with. So that is the question about stability. So uh, what is the concentration used when it comes to allantoin? Um, allantoin can be used in cosmetic product from 0.0001% to 2%. So that is the usually the range. Most pr product that I've noticed is uh, exist in the range of 1%. Uh, I rarely see product that has 2% allantoin. And uh, so uh, another interesting fact about, uh, about allantoin is that in Japan, it is considered an acceptable medicinal uh, ingredient uh, for cosmetics, which means that it ha you can be uh, give the uh, product that has allantoin in it in Japan some extra claims that can help with like soothing redness, uh, calming the skin, some kind of like a... Uh, claims that are not usually very legal, let's say, with cosmetics, because the regulation in Japan is a little bit different. If you want a video about that, let me know in the comments. Uh, so another question is that Alentoin as well is approved by the FDA as a skin protectant in concentration between 0.5 and 2%. In Europe, is it considered a cosmetic product and mostly used in the same range of uh, concentration between 0.5 to 2%. So that is the fact. Uh, about like a penetration of the skin and safety in general, allantoin is quite safe. It's not carcinogenic. It's not mutagenic. Carcinogenic means it can cause cancer in the cell. Mutagenic, it can cause damage to your DNA. Neither of those uh, considered properties of uh, allantoin. Uh, it wasn't uh, considered a skin irritant when tried in uh, water solution with concentration of 0.5%. But as you know, reaction to a specific ingredient can be very individual and very specific. So always patch test when you want to incorporate a new ingredient to your uh, skincare routine. So, but in general, those are the main um, feature. It's quite safe product. It's quite stable. And when it comes to penetration of the skin, um, some studies did the um, uh, penetration and absorption, of course. Some studies were done on a solution of 5% of uh, weight by weight uh, solution. And um, only 5% of the 5% the, of the allantoin in the, in the formula was able to penetrate, but the body is able to deal with it super fast. And I will tell you why. Because allantoin is a natural product in the bodies of some mammals, not us, some mammals and some plants. But you can detect it in the human blood naturally because the uh, precursor of allantoin is called uric acid. We know uric acid is produced by our body. When our body is under a stress and there is a lot of oxidation happening that is not uh, related to enzymatic reaction, um, allantoin can be produced and it can be um, metabolized by your uh, liver and excreted through urine. So you don't have, it's naturally happening in your, in your body uh, in small amounts um, and as a result of oxidative stress. And an interesting fact that the science, when they did that, they noticed that if uh, we detect uh, allantoin in the body, we can in a way calculate the age of the body, how much there is um, a stress on the body, oxidative stress on the body, because naturally the human body like the enzyme that 
allow us to make allantoin, but it can be made by non-enzymatic of uh, oxidative reaction. So this is a very interesting fact about allantoin. So uh, it can be paired with other active, let's say retinol and salicylic acid, yes. And why I consider it a quite perfect uh, combination is that it, like I said, it ha it can reduce the uh, the irritation uh, level of your skin, which means your skin won't be as reactive to irritants thanks to uh, allantoin. And another one is that um, it can um, medicate the side effects of salicylic acid and retinol when it comes to uh, uh, redness, irritation, possible uh, purging from the, the using of a product, uh, using of ingredient that accelerate the um, skin, uh, skin cell cycle. So basically, I, I, will, I would consider it a very good combo. If you, want, if you want to look for something that can calm the skin down, that can, uh, let's say, um, reduce any possible uh, outcome of uh, very powerful active like salicylic acid and retinol for some people. And actually it was considered one of the ingredients in one of the reviews that I read it for um, uh, that can be used a lot and is used actually a lot in cosmetic when it comes uh, to a product targeted to sensitive skin. The top I think was niacinamide. I think the second one was um, oat extract the third one was alentoin so basically it's very sensitive skin friendly the irritation is very limited so if you are afraid of that always always when you use any new product or you want to incorporate it patch test it i would recommend patch test it be, be behind your ear uh, because it's close First, it, it is a hidden area. The second, it's closer to a lymphatic nodes. So if there is a reaction that is going to happen, it's going to happen faster in a way here. So it, you won't have to be um, afraid about a red patch in your face. And uh, Alenta, when I used in many Korean skincare, yes, like I said, in Korea and Japan, uh, it is given a, I would say, a higher rank than another ingredient cosmetic ingredients i will explain regulation if you want in another video or another live just let me know um uh oh thank you say hi to dad hi dad so yeah basically um that's what you can do uh, another w interesting fact about uh, alentoin is that when a study used alentoin and um coal tar which is a uh, natural extract that contain a lot of hydrocarbon uh, uh, compounds usually used in psoriasis. So it's a kind of anti-psoriasis uh, um, compound um, or extract. They use this uh, with alentoin uh, for treating diaper rash, which is a very known uh, skin irritant, uh, skin irritation uh, condition that happens in babies due to moisture and disrupted uh, skin barrier. And they compared it to one of the steroids. I can't remember the, actually the steroids. And in a way, it was comparable. Steroids was a little bit ahead, but in a way, it was comparable. And the effect, again, it was not alantoin alone, alantoin and coal tar. So that is the, um, the benefit that you can expect from coal tar. Uh, and I, like I said, focus on like wound healing. If you have a scar or redness that is annoying, alantoin is perfect, anti-irritation, a very mild chiroletic, uh, what else is um, help your immune cell not to be super reactive and um, it's very stable and very safe. So it, was, it is considered one of the uh, safest and most stable ingredient that you can incorporate, which is our perfect features for people with sensitive skin. We don't want an ingredient that is not stable that can break down and give us uh, a compound that can irritate the skin. So. That is the all information. Like he said, that in the description, you will find all the studies if you want to read a little bit more. And if you have any question, please let me know in the uh, live chat. And if not, I will wait a couple of minutes and then we can end this live. And please let me know in, um, in the live chat, if you can, if it's better than... Um, doing the ingredient breakdown in on my channel on Instagram. I have an issue with that. It is it feels like I'm talking to myself when it, when it comes to channel because you guys can't
can only react to the message. You can't have to ask questions, have um, any type of like um, curiosity about the ingredient. So in this way, I believe it's more communicative. Like I can answer your question immediately. We can discuss the ingredient. If you are using a product with Alantone, you can suggest it so everyone else can as well uh, enjoy it. So please let me know as well. And uh, yeah, if you have a question, please let me know in the live chat. If not, I will be ending that in like two minutes or so. So yes, that is the Alantone. It's like I said, saved. And uh, I think I mentioned it is approved in the FDA as a, pro a skin protectant, which means it gives it a, a more uh, power compared to, or more features compared to a regular cosmetic product. Uh, Lantone is number three after nine. Okay, so I, I read a review studies that went over um, Skincare, ingre uh, skincare ingredients, spe uh, specifically cosmetics, that uh, exist in a product targeted towards uh, sensitive skin. So the study went to the market and collected the product from the market that is uh, labeled and marketed toward people with sensitive skin. And what they did is that they went through the uh, ingredient list to make sure what kind of ingredient is most tailored towards sensitive, sensitive skin people. The top one was niacinamide in the studies. And I think they collected 1,100 something product, cosmetic product or skincare product. Uh, niacinamide was on top. Of course, niacinamide exists in every type of product because it can support your skin barrier. It has some anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidants. Um, the second one was um, oat extract. So I think they found it a lot in Aven kind of uh, uh, lines of skincare the third one was alentoin so that is the perfect oh hey nick how are you hey naya how are you so yeah that is the um, the actual um what i meant that alentoin came third when it comes to a cosmetic product that is targeted or marketed towards people with sensitive skin so that is the uh what I meant, it's a study. I, I don't think I included it in the description, but after the video is saved, I will include it in the description. So if you want to read, most of the study that I include are open source, so or open access, sorry, which means that you can go and you can find the file to download or just read it. Some of them I have access thanks to my um, university credential. They give me access to a few journals and stuff. So yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, Nick. Uh, when you do live on TikTok, let me know so I can, so I can pop in. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, I will definitely add it after it's uploaded. And uh, again, uh, if there is any question, please let me know in the con in the live chat. And uh, if you prefer it this way compared to breakdown in the Instagram, which is a long test. And the issue is. I love the channel. I love that I can communicate with you directly. But like I said, there is no reaction. Plus, the um, the feature is not there yet. I only can open it through my phone. But when I prepare the information for you guys through text, I have to type it on my computer, then transfer it to my phone. And then from my phone, uh, like a Telegram or whatever, then transfer it to Instagram, which is a lot uh, of a lengthy process. Plus, the um, there is a limit of how big you can send text. So I have to also do dissect it into a smaller part. So I really prefer this way because I can communicate and answer your questions. Of course, Christian, thank you for your for attending and uh, being here. So yes, that's why I prefer it. Plus it will help with my channel achieve the monetization of uh, watch hours because life is one of the best ways to gain watch hours. So that would be perfect. Video for me is better for me. I actually share it, but you know me, I cannot go against what my community wants. If you guys agreed, if you want to the channel with text, I would go with it. But it's just like, in a way, I think it, in my opinion, my personal opinion, it can be more communicative. Like if you have a question about something you didn't understand from the text, you can tell me, you have to send me a DM. Sometimes the DM, I literally can't see them guys. 
Sometimes I receive a notification that someone wants to send me something. I go in and I don't find anything. So that's another problem that I don't receive a lot of a lot of your questions. So this way I can receive them immediately, direct, and I can answer you so fast. So yeah, uh, a quick recap, and then we will end. That is the the chance for you to submit your question. Uh, sorry if I'm butchering your names, guys. I'm so bad with name. Aroras, thank you so much for attending uh, and um, being here. So, like I said, Alentoin has antibacterial, of course, I didn't mention that, but it has antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, anti-irritation, and a mildly chirolytic, which means breaks the bonds between the cells. It is approved in the in the US, in Japan, in Korea, and in Europe. The concentration mainly between 0.5 to 2%. Uh, it, it has a higher status in the US because it can be used, uh, it is considered and approved as a skin protectant. It is super safe, not a mutagenic, not carcinogenic, uh, not a skin irritant, not an eye irritant. And it can be used in aqueous formulation, which means in uh, gels, toners, you, uh, the formula of the product doesn't have to be uh, thick and contain a lot of oils to benefit from that. Uh, like you mentioned, one of you guys mentioned it, it exists a lot on the East uh, Asian product, like uh, Korea and Japan, they incorporate it a lot, specifically with Sika, uh, Centella, of course, and uh, other type of soothing ingredients. What else? Um, it penetrates the skin. Uh, it can be absorbed by the skin by 5% of the dose applied on the skin. But don't worry, it is naturally produced by our bodies through ox non-enzymatic oxidative reaction. Because we are humans and I think apes like the enzyme that convert the precursor, which is uric acid, to, al uh, to alentoin. So we... we produce it through oxidative stress of uh, just by us eating, breathing, uh, getting exposed to pollutants, UV rays, whatever it will be uh, produced and your body immediately uh, metabolize it through your kidney and liver, uh, sorry, liver and excrete it through your kidney. So you don't have to be scared about anything. What else? Uh, yes, that is the all information that I can provide you guys. I hope you guys you enjoyed it. And if you have a question later, just um, write them at the comments. I will add the study that uh, I mentioned when it comes to ingredients. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, we will continue in the channel on Instagram. Have a great day. Bye.